I'm the oldest living person born in Saluda. I'll be 95 years old in August. The rest of you all are just late comers or <laughs> arriving late. Saluda has a great history, not a long one, but a great one. Burl Face, a native of uh, North Carolina, lived some years in uh, South Carolina, finally got a land grant and came here. His land was in the area of the Old Mountain Page Church Building. Fact about it, the church building was part of his land grant, and it was passed down generations, generations, and uh, finally one of them made a deed for the graveyard. So uh, the faces were here from 1804 until now. This was called Pace's Gap. This area was. Now the railroad didn't have to have a right of way. They could take one. The railroad had an eminent domain. So they brought the railroad right through Cornelius Pace's property. He owned property in this area, all of it, some of it emptied into the Packet River, the water from here. The rest of it went to Green River. His house was down by Camp Creek. He had a lot of children. When he died, they didn't think it was worth anything to uh, settle the estate and didn't. Well, then later on, the train came through and all of his descendants came out of the woodwork and <laughs> wanted a piece of the land or some of the money. One granddaughter or great-granddaughter lived in Austin, Texas, and she kept writing the court in Hendersonville asking when she was going to get part of her granddaddy's estate. And the court said, well, we can't settle it yet. We can't settle it yet. Incidentally, when they did settle it, through the form, the lawyer got high for the settlement. <laughs> but anyway, they finally divided lots across the railroad here and sold it at a public auction, those lots. I have drawings of them. I have the record of them, who bought them, how much they paid for them, and all. Uh, that's pointing out what I said. And, uh, Saluda has a colorful and real history. Now, the early families came here. The wards and the paces and the statements from over in Greenville County, the Lauders and the Thompsons and Bradleys came out of Rutherford. Some came from South Carolina. <clears throat> the Arliches and Newmans and Halberts came from Fairfield County, South Carolina as a group. And they settled all around here. So uh, if you trace the families, where they lived and all. An exciting picture is when they decided to run the line, the county line, separating Polk County from Henderson County. I have a copy of that. Name three buildings in the town. Campbell House, Dr. Goliath's house, and one more. 
That's all the buildings that were in the town at that time. But anyway, bits and pieces like that make up a colorful history. And you would do well to develop this museum and preserve it for people to see, read, and understand. Even the mayor could learn something from it. <laughs> uh, now, about raising this money. You have to make up your mind what it's worth to the community and to you individually. I would suggest that 50 of you came up, come up with a thousand dollars a piece right away. Even if you have to borrow it, it won't take you long to pay it back. But if you go to buy a car, you pay three times that for it, would you? Yeah. Buy anything that they cost a big portion of that. Go buy a washing machine or a cooking stove, anything, half of that, all right? So make up your mind, it's a valuable opportunity. You have an opportunity to participate in it. You'll never regret it. And as you develop it, you'll all be proud. I hope you will respond readily. <laughs> well, I asked the county commissioners to restore the historic courthouse in Henderson County. The chairman of the county commissioners said we're sure of three votes and we're sure that two will vote no. Well, it turned out that all five of them voted yes. And I said, well, we're on a roll here. Let's go for the cost of it. I asked the commissioners to agree to $11 million. That's what it cost us to restore the historic courthouse. Beautiful building in Hendersonville. You couldn't imagine what the main street of Hendersonville would look like without it. Well, it's there, the county has it paid for, and it's in good shape. But incidentally, they voted unanimously to float the bonds of $11 million to do it. It can be done, probably if each one of you here this afternoon would do your duty and see the value of this project. And step up and do it. You'll have it solved. Thank you.